Hi everyone, welcome back to Gold Fries. In this video, we'll be looking at this, the Astrock B650M PG Riptide. Now there are two models. This one with me here is the one with the Wi-Fi AX, and there is one without the Wi-Fi, which is the most affordable among Astrock motherboard, retailing at just below RM900 for the non-Wi-Fi version. However, the Wi-Fi version is not in the country yet. Regardless, there's two models, so you know what to look for if you're looking for an affordable B650 motherboard, which is for the AMD AM5 chipset. Now, what's so nice about this motherboard? Well, it has 15-phase VRM, nice solid heat sink. It has PCIe Gen 5 for the storage, which is this one over here. Then there's a Gen 4, and the PCIe slot for graphics card is Gen 4. And it has three ARGB pins for your creativity. And then it has a number of fan connectors, which um, my only complaint is that there's only one CPU fan connector, which there's usually two. Now, this is to me a, a bit of a drawback because typically when we mount an AIO cooler on top or on the front, we want one for the CPU block and one for the fan. But this is a minor issue. So, What's in your mind right now is most probably how does this affordable motherboard perform and I did just that. I used the AMD Ryzen 9 7950X on this motherboard and on my Astro X70E Tai Chi Carrera which is the highest spec board in Astro's lineup with that beautiful marble touch. Now, Guess how's the performance between this one and the highest end board? We are comparing two boards of different sides of the spectrum and here's the results. I'm surprised too. Yes, I know the VRM on the B650 MPG Riptide is good, but I did not know that it is this good. So if you did not get it yet, the performance difference based on Sydney Bench R23 is just 1%. Yes, that tiny 1%, based on the score, it is just 1% difference, which is amazing. I mean, typically we think low-end boards, they may not be performing, they would most probably be not performing that well. But low-end of an AM5 motherboard is of a very high quality build. And suffice to say, I'm very impressed with this board itself. So if you're looking for a sub RM1000 motherboard, Wi-Fi or not, at least over here in Malaysia, it's a non-Wi-Fi version, you can consider this board. Even a 7950X works very well with it. So what's more of this for me to say? I couldn't complain about it. Overall, it just depends on what you need, especially on stuff like this, like the USB ports, if it's sufficient for you, and all the things like the rest of the storage and PCIe slots and all that, and they are sufficient for you, then really, this is a good board of choice. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.